This is iPhone 12 mini. One of my favorite iPhones of all time. Not because it's new, but because of what it has to offer. I'll say this from the beginning. You may not agree with me and that's okay, but the iPhone 12 mini is really dope. I've had this phone for four months now, for four months, get it? Anyway, and here are my thoughts. So let's get right into it. Whenever we hear the word iPhone, we can instantly imagine what one looks like, and it's no different with the iPhone 12 series, including the 12 mini. All I can say is that I absolutely love this design. This is basically the iPhone 12, but smaller, hence the mini in its name. This is the smallest iPhone in Apple's current lineup, even smaller than the 2020 iPhone SE in size. Its display is a 5.4 inch OLED panel, and man, it's super clean and accurate. I initially thought that a lot of people were hyped for the 12 mini, but according to recent sales numbers, the 12 mini hasn't been performing too well. However, for those who I know that own the 12 mini, they absolutely love the compact design of the 12 mini. The phone is made of glass and aluminum, and it also supports wireless charging. It also houses a dual camera system, which I will dive deeper into a little bit. Anyway, the fact that the 12 mini fits snug in my hand and I can reach from one side to the other of the display is something I've really missed for a long time. As phones have gotten larger each year, we've been accustomed to them. And to be honest, this 12 mini is a welcoming change for me and definitely for others too. Oh, and the squared off design is also something I appreciate in the new iPhone's 12 series. The notch is present and that doesn't really bother me because it does serve its purpose. In fact, the iPhone 12 mini is probably one of my favorite iPhone designs and probably one of my favorite phone designs in general in a long time. Software plays a key role with iPhones and the 12 mini is no different. iOS 14 is super duper refined. And with the introduction of widgets and the app library, it's a new feel for a lot of users. Many users have been able to customize their iPhones to their liking and are able to express who they are. And I've played with the app widgets and whatnot. So I've done that too, like everybody else. Anyway, like with every iOS iteration, iOS 14 is super smooth and reliable. In fact, it's so smooth that I've gotten used to its 60 hertz refresh rate coming from an Android user who uses a 120 hertz refresh rate device. I should be able to notice the difference, but it doesn't seem to be the case, with me at least. Others would disagree, and they will be able to distinctively tell the difference and that's okay. I can tell the difference, but it's just not as distinctive as for others. And like I said, that is okay. There is one thing I do like, and something I can trust Apple on. That is a four to five year software update support guarantee. While Android OEMs are working to improve their software support and Samsung has been doing great this year, nothing beats Apple. You can use a four to five year old iPhone and it will still perform like a champ. Another plus is the fact that apps tend to have iOS support before they move over to Android. And I guess an app right now that is booming on iOS is Clubhouse, doesn't have support on Android. In my case, a lot of people around me use an iPhone, so app support for them is also a huge plus. One last thing to know about my usage of the 12 mini, and this also does tie to software, but that is the fluidity of the ecosystem. I can easily switch from my 12 mini to my MacBook and continue where I left off with Safari, for example. I can also switch easily from using my AirPods Pro from the 12 mini to my MacBook and vice versa. And if there is one thing that I'm super grateful for that has also come in clutch for the channel is AirDrop, period. AirDrop, that's it. It's come in super clutch for everything, especially the channel. So thank you, Apple. These features have made my life much easier, especially for this channel. By the way, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Anyway, let's continue. A strong suit for iPhones is the camera. 12 mini, no different. It's a champ. I absolutely love it. I can literally rely on it for any situation. The 12 mini has the same wide 
the ultra wide and selfie cameras found on the iPhone 12. There is no telephoto lens, but I don't care. That doesn't bother me. Photos and videos for me have been phenomenal to the fact that I can use my iPhone 12 mini and rely on it for videos for the channel, which in my past couple videos, I did use the iPhone 12 mini to record my comparison videos of phone devices. The mini can also record videos up to 4K 60 frames per second and up to 4K 30 frames per second in Dolby Vision. We knew that, right? It's a given. What I like more is that I am able to take photos or videos one handed if needed because of the compact size. An iPhone, especially the 12 series, is proof that you don't need a high-end DSLR or a mirrorless camera to take your photos or even start a YouTube channel. You probably hear this a lot from a lot of YouTubers. It's true. You don't need the highest-end DSLR or you don't need a mirrorless camera to start your channel or to start taking photos or videos. If you have an iPhone 12 or 12 mini or 12 Pro, or 12 Pro Max, or any iPhone for that matter, get started on pursuing your dream because you're never too late. If you're watching this video and you want to start a YouTube channel, you're not too late. So get started. That being said, I'll be dropping some sample images taken with the 12 Mini. If there's one thing I'm bummed about with this phone, it's battery life. Now I get it, it's a smaller device which means a smaller battery, but when you come from devices that last you all day and have super duper fast charging that doesn't let you down, well the 12 mini really struggled for me. Granted, the standby time is on point, so I do give credit for Apple. I also love my MagSafe charger and the fact that the 12 mini has wireless charging. Yeah, I mean, I came from a OnePlus 8T, so I wasn't using wireless charging, doesn't even support it, but I had fast charging. So wireless charging, I didn't really need it, but since I do have it, it does come in clutch. I knew what I was getting myself into with a small device, and when you also add 5G capability, well, yeah, it, it only makes things worse. I'll have to end up charging the phone by the afternoon since I am a heavy user. If you're a light user, don't worry about this part, but if you're a heavy user, yeah, you're going to have to charge it at least once during the day. So for those heavy users and folks who love having a longer lasting battery, I'm sorry, but the 12 mini is a no go. However, if you're a light user that only uses your phone, like just for calling, texting, browsing the web, emails here and there, well, then you don't need to worry about the 12 mini. I can tell you that the 12 mini does last about an hour or so longer than the 2020 iPhone SE for those of you who are comparing the two devices. So that is a plus. Anyway, just know that battery on the 12 mini isn't a highlight or any feature of the phone. I can't finish my thoughts about the 12 mini if I don't touch base on price. It's uh, maybe a little too expensive. Many can't justify the price mainly because of its size and I get that. You can get the iPhone 12 for $100 more at $800, which is a larger phone overall. The iPhone 12 mini pretty much takes up the slot of the iPhone 11, and instead of being priced at $649 for the 64 gigs, you can pick up the iPhone 12 mini for only um, $699? $729? You see, carriers in the US are offering the 12 mini at $699 for 64 gigs, while the unlocked model in the US brings you up to $729. Why? Well, I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. If you want the 128 gig model, which is a sweet spot and it's the iPhone that I have, that adds $50 to each price. So $749 and $779. Look, the iPhone 12 mini might be a small device, but it's also a premium one as well. iPhones don't tend to go on sale as often as other devices like Samsung or OnePlus, but sometimes you'll find a good carrier deal. And if you do come across something like that, don't let that opportunity pass. We've been hearing rumors and reports that Apple is cutting production on the 12 mini and they're going to completely axe the mini lineup for 2021. Please don't do that. Please, Apple, if you're watching this video or if anyone who works at Apple, 
comes across this video, please don't ask the mini lineup, please. It looks as if many people have begun to get accustomed to that larger form factor and the iPhone 12 mini just doesn't suffice anymore. I still love this phone and I'm going to continue to use it. Would I recommend it? Well, of course I would. It's everything that I've wanted, but in a smaller form factor. Now that I'm saying that, it is, uh, it is my opinion. Many of you may agree with me or not, that's okay. But I would recommend this. It's everything that I've wanted, like I said, but in a smaller form factor. The iPhone 12 mini is a powerful little device, and even in 2021, it's well worth a buy. I mean, it did come out in 2020, so it's really, it's still a brand new device. But for those of you who are looking towards the iPhone 2021 series that's going to come out later this year and ask the question, oh, is the 12 mini worth the buy in 2021? It still is. And it'll easily compete with its competitors. Take a look at the iPhone 12 mini if you haven't already. Like, go ahead, look at it in store and hold it. See how it feels because you never know. You might just want to rock the iPhone 12 mini. Anyway, everybody, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to superman that like button. Comment down below because with the more interactions we get on this video, not only helps the video and the channel, but also pushes the video out to more viewers. And best of all, superman that subscribe button. Until next time, everybody, and until next video, this is MTG.